Cooking, where we feature Missouri Southern's brightest and finest. On today's show, we have the owners of Ann Company Eats, Megan Brossman, an alumni here at Missouri Southern, and Shaley Brown, a current senior. They will be discussing the health food oriented business they found us and show us how to make one of their own recipe creations, a yummy butternut squash hash. And I'm going to show you how to recreate that dish in a dorm approved cooking appliance. So come on, let's get started. Southern Cooking. We're in the dining room today with the ladies from Ann Company Eats. We've got Megan Brossman and Shaylee Brown. Hi, ladies. Hi. How's it going? Great. Good. Thanks Except for having us. Oh, thank you for thank being you so here. Yeah. So you both went to Missouri Southern, mm -hmm. and you graduated recently. Yes. With yes, a I'm psychology not. degree. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you analyzing me right now? No. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> Good, because that would take all day. <laughs> <laughs> and Shaylee, you're still in school yes. with a double degree in marketing and management. Yes. That's yes. huge. Yep. I'll be done in December. So. That's huge. Yep. I am struggling with my one degree in math communications. <laughs> I don't see how you do two of them. They're like so close. It's not even, it's like three extra classes. Oh, that's kind not of perfect. A big deal. Yeah. So, how did you guys meet? And I'm curious about that. Well, um, we, our parents met. Our parents first. met when we were not. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, and then I ended up going to school with Megan in like fourth grade, but we weren't friends. Megan thought I was super weird because I was homeschooled <laughs> till fourth grade. <laughs> and she then, was weird. Yeah, I mean, I was a homeschool kid. So. She was in band. I was in band. <laughs> I was super thing. uncool. And then oh, my goodness. Megan took me under her wing and mm -hmm. Made you cool. Sixth grade? Mm -hmm. okay, great. It's great. Well, how did you guys, you have very different degrees, very different minded degrees, in mm -hmm. fact. How did you come together to form this company and Company Eats? Well, um, we both are pretty healthy eaters um, just for health reasons. We have certain like dietary restrictions, if you will. Um, and so um, food and making food delicious and healthy is like a passion of both of ours. Yeah. And so um, we've been friends for a long time. We spend a lot of time together. I was like, why don't we just eat food and spend more time together? <laughs> and, um, just do something good and fun yeah. with it. So. Well, that's pretty great. I mean, yeah. it's a great concept, doing what you love with someone that you care about. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't have a worse career, could you? I mean, no. I think it's the best <laughs> thing you could do. I think that's what I want to do. That's why I'm doing this. So. Yeah. yeah. Because food is amazing. Food is literally what's going to heal the planet, I think. Good food. Mm -hmm. You know, if people start eating right, we're going to eliminate cancers and all kinds of health issues because food really is like a health thing. It's like medicine. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, though, like, how are you going to use your psychology degree in your business? Mm. Um, I think just we wanted our whole thing to be not just about food but also about the people that we eat with, like mm -hmm. around a table, um, hence and company. So, um, I don't know, I like to think that my degree helps me in relating to people and talking to them, getting to know them, you know, not in an analytical way necessarily, <laughs> but just like, I've learned a lot um, relationally from my degree and also from eating with people, yeah. so. Well, it's probably really easy to open up to you because yeah. of that, you know. Yeah. And then your degree is obvious, you're going to help build the company, yeah. right? Yes? Yeah, so I do all the taxes and all the... <laughs> numbers and all that stuff. So. All the boring stuff. <laughs> no, not bad. boring. It's wonderful. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. I love business. <laughs> so maybe we should get down to what and Company Eats is all about. Like, what is your company all about? Explain it to me. Yeah, so um, our, like, slogan is um, and Company laughs and Company shares and Company Eats. And so it's really just about, like, eating good food together, but, like, we don't want the main thing to be about food because we feel like people are more important than food. Mm -hmm. So and that's why it's and company eats because like, yeah, we're going to come and we're going to eat really good food together, but it's about the company that you're with and about the people that you share meals with and the people that you talk with while you're eating and all of that. So we've gotten to meet a lot of different people through our company, which is 
like the best part of it yeah. by far. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, what does your company do? Like, I'd heard before that you could you know, purchase kits with mm -hmm. recipes inside that had all the food in it. And yes. So you could go home and make this for a meal for your family. Mm -hmm. And But I, you also are trying to move into more catering. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what really is your, com like, what can somebody get from you? Like, explain to me, like, could I go to your website and, and purchase food samples from you, recipes from you, hire you for catering? Like, what can I as a consumer get from your company? Yeah. So we do have our boxes up right now, but we are phasing those out at the moment and moving more into catering. Um, so that actually that portion isn't totally launched yet because we're still hashing out some details. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we'll start catering within, like have our um, stuff up on the website within the next month, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so moving into catering, small plates, appetizers, orders, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's recipes up there, all original from us that we come up with in our kitchen. Um, and there's like... And you can find a whole bunch of stuff on there. But What's your website? It's andcompanyeats.com. Well, that's pretty simple. Yeah. So you used to work at the marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse. Yeah. Do you guys get a lot of your produce and stuff from there? Every, all of it. Yep. Me too. I love yeah. them. I know. Place. They're my favorite. I love them. <laughs> I can't get over the meats they have, the fish. It's amazing. The mm -hmm. coffee. Yeah. yeah. I don't even go to Starbucks anymore. Yeah. You know, I love that place. Well, I don't, everything's yeah. good. I don't get coffee very much, but when I do... Sure. It's from them. Yeah. Because yeah. they really do have everything. Yeah, they do. So do you want to get started? Maybe go in the kitchen and cook up Absolutely. some butternut squash. So join us in the kitchen next when we're going to make some butternut squash with these girls from Ann Company Eats. The Marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse is the best place in town for organic produce. The Marketplace houses Joplin's only organic coffee bar, featuring fresh local coffee beans. They have a wide variety of organic and gluten-free items, as well as local products, including milk, eggs, chocolate, and fresh meats. So go visit the Friendly and Helpful staff at 2820 East 32nd Street in Joplin, in the Food for Less parking lot. You stand beside me each Saturday, wrapped up against the crisp, fall, chill, and driving rain. Scarf around your neck to protect your clean-shaven face muttering underneath your breath and cursing at the refs. You always keep a folded program in your back pocket. They say you've been coming here for years, that you were the original fan. You remember seeing Rod Smith run and even saw the championship in 72. You are the murmur of the crowd and the waves of applause dancing along the field. You are the roar of the score and the shh before. You are the disappointed sigh and the laughter among the children. You often smile as you head for the exits with the drum still pounding in your ears. I doubt I'll ever know your name, but they say you are a linebacker. Southern cooking, where we are having way too much fun in the kitchen today with the ladies from Ann Company Eats. We got Megan and Shayla. Shaylee? Yes, Shaylee. Megan and Shaylee. I want to say Shayla, but it's, it's hard. Shaylee. You'll get. You got it. I got it. I have no. I have all faith in you. So we're making butternut squash hash. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's unique. It's very full. Well, you guys created this recipe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you create a lot of recipes? All of them. Yep. Oh, that's. And you're making a cookbook? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah. Are you yes, making a cookbook? I am. Okay. <laughs> we are the cookbook sisters. I like it. I like this it. This is too. our sign. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna work the sign. Thing yeah, we're we'll gonna get a handshake on. So go ahead and get started, and yep. let's see what what's what you're doing. So what's okay. the first step? So first step is you'll chop up butternut squash and all your potatoes, mm -hmm. and then throw those in a warm oiled pan. Okay. First. So how much oil do we want in our pan? You just want to cover the bottom of it. Okay. So like two tablespoons? Two tablespoons probably yeah. is usually a standard go-to. And we always put a whole garlic clove. Mm -hmm. We cut this one in half just to get more flavor out of it, but put the whole thing in just to add more garlic flavor. So while you're doing that, after you put some of that in, I want you to show me how you actually cut up a butternut squash because okay. I don't know that. Usually I cut mine in half like this. Mm -hmm. I start there and then I'll scoop out the middle. And sometimes if I don't have a spoon with me, I'll just cut it into smaller pieces and then just cut out the middle. So you've got everything in your hot pan, you're, you've sauteed it a little bit, sauteed. and now you're going to let it 
get a little softer with the mm -hmm. lid on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're really difficult, so just make sure that you lift weights before you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the rest of your workout here. And yeah, it is not an easy no. vegetable to cut. It's not. No. I'd say it's one of the harder, harder vegetables, but worth it. So I'm surprised you're not cutting yourself because this is very hard. <laughs> I would be cutting myself at this point. So I cut it into little strips, peel the strips, and then just chop it real, real little. That really takes the work out of it, like it really making does. it smaller like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then you just chop these little. Now, how did you guys learn how to make all these fun recipes? Just oh man, my we're mom still learning. grew up cooking, <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely still learning. Just creativity. I don't know. We just experiment a lot. Yeah. I a lot of experimentation. Yeah. So you just can't be afraid. You just gotta no, go to the kitchen. Oh, no yeah. way. Be fearless. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So you so. probably cook that. 20 minutes, I think, covered, mm -hmm. just so that you really get them steamed. And then we'll add in the onions, chopped okay. onion. Get that caramelized. Now, the slower you cook mm. an onion, the, the sweeter it caramelizes, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. yep. So you don't want to have those cooking too fast, because you mm -hmm. do want that sweet flavor to come yes. out, right? Yes, yeah. Very definitely. Good. So add your onion, and then we'll add our chopped garlic, two cloves of garlic chopped. OK. But that goes with the two whole cloves you put in. Yes. Right. Okay. And then we'll add our zested or shredded or grated ginger or chopped, really fine. Okay, now that was quite a bit of ginger. You called that a thumb of ginger. A thumb of ginger, a small thumb. There, you can, there's like large thumbs that are probably like, I don't know, probably like this big, but okay. like, I would say probably about that big. Because ginger's pretty overpowering. It is pretty overpowering, yeah. yeah. But it, when you cook it down a little bit, the mm -hmm. flavor's not as strong. It's pretty mild. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. good. But a little goes a long way. Yes, absolutely. Even still. And then we'll add our spices in. Okay, <coughs> what do you need? Oh. So we're going to add a fourth teaspoon of clove. And uh, now you've crushed those cloves. Yes, mm -hmm. we crushed cloves. You can buy crushed cloves or you can okay. crush your own, which is probably fresher and better, right. I'd say. And then yes. you want rosemary. Rosemary. And then we have cinnamon. Cinnamon. That's interesting. Yep. Turmeric. Turmeric? So, turmeric. Turmeric, okay. Yeah, it's so good for you. It's supposed to be very high in cancer fighting antioxidants, it's too. It's so yeah. good for you. And then we have nutmeg. Yep. This is yeah. very fall. Very fall. Yes. Very fall. Yeah. And of course, we used olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, you used two, two different kinds of sweet potatoes in here. You used mm -hmm. a Japanese sweet potato and a jewel sweet potato, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. What's the yeah. difference? Do you know? The Japanese, um, the Japanese have a white flesh, so um, typically you think of like a, an orange sweet potato, you know? Um, but the Japanese have a white flesh and kind of like an eggplant purple skin, um, and they are sweet, but not um, not quite as sweet as a typical like yam. Um, okay, so we're not measuring these because <laughs> cooks don't often do that. But no. what they're definitely putting in here is like a half a teaspoon of some of their, of like the nutmeg and the turmeric, right? And then uh, These are a fourth, a right? A fourth a teaspoon yes. of these. And then how much cinnamon? A half. fourth. A fourth a, a fourth? teaspoon? I, a fourth you know one, depending on how you to like taste. that. Okay, to taste. Okay. Cinnamon to taste. <laughs> cinnamon to taste. I like that. And then how much rosemary do you think? This is a whole teaspoon. A whole I do teaspoon. know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We but love it's our cooked, rosemary. though. It's we cooked. know the handshake. We can, we can measure yeah. pretty well. Yeah. I'm actually going to pop this off. Yeah, I'd better to do that. And if there's a certain spice in here that you do like love and you're like, ooh, I want more of that, mm -hmm. like, do it. Oh, absolutely. Now, I noticed that you guys, you're using some salt, salt. but you mm -hmm. haven't used any pepper. Mm -mm. This is a pepper-free recipe. Yes, pepper-free. Okay. So, if you're allergic to that pepper, it makes you sneeze. This recipe's for you. Yeah. Well, that's good, because I've been trying to quit. <laughs> well, it's hard. It's hard to quit. We've all been there. <laughs> okay. And then we'll let this cook more. Um, and maybe even cover it for a little bit longer, yeah. <clears throat> but not, you don't want to cover this for too long. You do want to get this one caramelized more than steamed. Yeah. Right, so, right. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> we're steaming that, but mostly caramelizing it. Yeah. And then from this point on, how do you, long do you think that we'll cook it? Probably another 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, not super long. Yeah. Um, well, you know really what? Easy. Yeah. With the magic of television dun, and dun, dun, awesome dun. friends. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. We have an already prepared oh, butternut squash hash. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. The microwave did it. I know. I, mean, <laughs> I don't believe it. It's the magic of television. Right. Oh, okay. got it. And the magic of you ladies. Oh. So I'm going to try it. Yeah. Go for You're it. You're going to try it with me? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. You're, I've never had this before because you it's your original well, recipe. Yeah. Yeah. I? I hope you haven't had it before. <laughs> that would be bad Anyways, for us. We're frauds. Mm. It's like. 
fall in my mouth. It's totally fall. Mm -hmm. It's like a fall comfort food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But so good for you. It is so good. Yeah. I usually have my butternut or all my squashes roasted down and so mushy. Mm -hmm. This texture leaves such a great flavor. Yeah. It changes it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so my good. goodness. Glad you like it. The key is small chops. Mm -hmm. You want them diced real small. So they and cook, they help right? cook faster too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. now I have to go home and recreate this dish in a dorm approved appliance. You can do it. You think yeah. I can? I have I no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Well, girls, thank you for joining us. Thank you I'm for having so us. glad you could come yeah. here. Oh, it's fun. Everybody yeah. told me I was going to love you, and they were right. <laughs> <laughs> they were. So thank you for joining us. Come back next. Stay tuned and all because I'm going to show you how to recreate this dish in a dorm approved cooking appliance that you're not going to want to miss. The Missouri Southern State University Bookstore is your place to find all things MOSO. We have a wide selection of Missouri Southern apparel and gear to choose from, so you'll have no problem showing your lion pride. Our bookstore is also the place to find books and other supplies required for class. So whether you need apparel, books, or just a snack, come out to the Missouri Southern Bookstore located in the Billingsley Student Center on the campus of Missouri Southern State University. Catch complete coverage of Joplin City Council meetings only on KGCS-TV, Channel 22. Keeping the citizens of the Joplin, Missouri area informed and in the know for the past 30 years. Live at 6 p.m., first and third Mondays of each month. Rebroadcast on the first and third Tuesdays of each month. Catch Joplin City Council only on KGCS-TV, Channel 22. At Missouri Southern, we believe achieving a university education should be possible for everyone. That is why we are working hard to make earning a university education accessible and always an excellent value. As a graduate of Missouri Southern, you should expect to reach your career goals. Take a look at our graduates in health sciences, teacher education, business, or biology. Their success can be yours. Come check out Missouri Southern, apply for admission, and see where your academic career can take you. to make a crock pot version of the butternut squash hash that the ladies from Ann Company Eats showed us. So this is kind of a, a difficult process because we want to caramelize the onions rather than steam the onions, which is what a crock pot does. So there's two steps here, and the first step is really an entire cook session all itself. We're going to start by making a foil wrap for our garlic, which I have cut the top of. You can see here now, and I'm going to leave it whole because I'm going to roast this garlic. But I'm going to put it in a crock pot with a lot of cut onions, so I don't want my my paper, for, you know, my outer edges of my garlic to mess with my onions. So I'm going to make this cute little foil bag for them to roast in in the crock pot with the onions. Now, see how cute that is? It's right in there. Now what we're going to do next is pour a bunch of olive oil in there because we want to coat it. We want that to really roast down in there. And that step is pretty simple. We're going to put that in the crock pot and then what I would do next is put two and three onions in there and cook that down for about 12 hours. You want to make way more onions than you're going to need because that's the way it caramelizes better. And then you're going to be able to use those leftover onions for anything you want, say, you know, spaghetti or put on a, a cheeseburger, anything you want. So we're going to put that in the crock pot. And what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to leave that in there since I've already made it. And I'm going to let that roast up with the butternut squash hash. It'll be all going at the same time. It'll be really good. So when we do finish this 12-hour on low cook of onions and garlic roasting, we're going to come up with something that looks just like this. It's very beautiful. It's very caramelized. And it's exactly what we want because as the recipe goes, you do not want steamed onions. So we're going to actually pull those out of the crock pot, set aside, and add them to the butternut squash hash at the very end of the cook. So what we've done now is we've cut up everything into small ch chunks, little cubes, like they showed us uh, with the Andy Eats Company's girl, like Megan showed us. So we have everything really small. We're going to just add that to the crock pot now. We've got our butternut squash cut down. And you don't need too much of each. You're going to have leftovers 
unless you're feeding a huge family and you have a huge crock pot. But with these small crock pots, you probably want a half of a butternut squash. And then right here I have a half of a Japanese uh, sweet potato. They have those at the, Jop and Mar the marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse. They're really great. And then here we also have a jewel sweet potato, which that you can also find at the marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse. Now we're putting all this stuff in our crock pot. We're just laying it on top. Here's our small new potatoes. We've got those layered on top. And the next step is we're going to want to add some olive oil. We're not going to want to add any water. And we're also going to not forget to add our chopped up ginger. Now that we want that on top, so it's going to cook down in there. Also on top of that, we want some ground nutmeg. You can do this by hand like I like to do, or you can do like a fourth of a tablespoon. We're going to do some turmeric. I can't say that very well. We're going to do a little, like a half a teaspoon of that. I like that flavor. And that's really what the spices are. It's flavor to your own taste. We're going to add some cinnamon. Just so nice looking. And then we're going to add quite a bit of rosemary. But we're also going to save some back to add at the end. We saved a lot back. There's a ton there. So what we've got now is we're going to add a little bit more oil. And I'm just going to try to turn that up a little bit so our seasons can get down in there. Now, we're going to cook that for about four hours on low. And then at our four hour point, we're going to put in our onions and our garlic that we've mixed together. So we're not going to do that yet. We do want that to cook down. So what we're going to do now, four hours on low. So here's our yummy dish that I really want to try, but I'm going to wait because I'm going to try this next in the dining room with Tani. So join us then. The Marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse is the best place in town for organic produce. The Marketplace houses Joplin's only organic coffee bar, featuring fresh local coffee beans. They have a wide variety of organic and gluten-free items, as well as local products including milk, eggs, chocolate, and fresh meats. So go visit the friendly and helpful staff at 2820 East 32nd Street in Joplin, in the Food for Less parking lot. The Missouri Southern State University Bookstore is your place to find all things MOSO. We have a wide selection of Missouri Southern apparel and gear to choose from, so you'll have no problem showing your lion pride. Our bookstore is also the place to find books and other supplies required for class. So whether you need apparel, books, or just a snack, come out to the Missouri Southern Bookstore located in the Billingsley Student Center on the campus of Missouri Southern State University. Beautiful. It is. It looks delicious. You did a great job seasoning it. Oh, thank you. I'm just curious. Where's the other one? Oh, it's in the fridge. Let me get it. Wait, it's still cold? Well, yeah. Let me turn my pan off. What's okay. wrong? I need to teach you the three rules of cooking a steak. Okay, rule number one is it needs to be room temperature before it goes in the pan. Oh, so okay. it cooks evenly. Rule number two. Your pan needs to be smoking hot. And what's the what's the third one? When you pull your steak off. You have to let it sit. You can't cut it right away. You can't cut it to check it. You have to let it sit at least five minutes. Oh, oh my gosh. These are great tips I didn't even learn in home ec class. <laughs> well, here, I'm here to teach you. You are. So now you'll be prepared when preparing your next steak. You stand beside me each Saturday, wrapped up against the crisp, fall chill and driving rain, scarf around your neck to protect your clean shaven face, muttering underneath your breath and cursing at the refs. You always keep a folded program in your back pocket. They say you've been coming here for years, that you were the original fan. You remember seeing Rod Smith run and even saw the championship in 72. You are the murmur of the crowd and the waves of applause dancing along the field. You are the roar of the score and the shh before. You are the disappointed sigh and the laughter among the children. You often smile as you head for the exits with the drums still pounding in your ears. I doubt I'll ever know your name, 
but they say you are a lion backer. Promotional consideration has been provided by Pearl Brothers True Value, proud sponsor of Missouri Southern State University. Southern Cooking. We're in the dining room. I'm joined with my producer, Tawny Lyon. Hi, Tawny. How are you? Super as always. Good. How did you enjoy cooking with Ann Company Eats? Those girls were amazing. Right? They had me cracking up so much. Did you? Yeah, they're pretty funny. They're so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. They're so pretty. And in their own unique ways. Mm hmm Like, I loved it. Yeah, I loved how they, like, kind of grew up all together, yet they've they have different things like the psychology major and then the business major like they did their own things exactly but they stayed best friends mm -hmm. I was so surprised to learn that they've been friends since literally they were young right like, since sixth grade not fourth grade. not fourth grade <laughs> somebody wasn't cool enough for fourth grade <laughs> that was so adorable I know I love them I can't wait to get together with them and cook like mm -hmm. at my house one day me right. and then we're gonna have the best time oh yeah we're gonna do that for sure I'm curious if my butternut squash hash was anywhere near as good as theirs. Well, theirs was pretty good. I mm -hmm. did enjoy it. Let's see. Mm, that Mine's is. a little softer, more steam-like. And I think that's going to be just from the crock pot, right? It's right. going to be more like that. This but was your first time in your life ever having butternut squash was this. It was, yeah, and it's really good. Yeah. I, it's it's mind-blowing. It's been gone my whole life. <laughs> what happened with that? Well, at least you have the rest of your life to have it. Yeah, and it's really good. I, I really enjoy it. I have to make you Hubbard squash next. And what is that? It's a lot like a butternut, but just a little richer and yummier. Yummier? It can mm -hmm. get yummier? It can get yummier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to try it. We're now taking entries for our Facebook contest. Post a message on our page with the phrase of the week you see at the bottom of the screen, and you can become a finalist for our giveaway at the end of the semester. You can also check our Facebook page for contest rules at Homestyle Southern Cooking. Special thanks to Ann Company Eats for joining, in this, joining us this week. It was such a great show. We had such a great time with you learning how to make butternut squash hash. And I'd also like to thank my wonderful crew. I could not do this without you guys. And you, Tani, I couldn't do it without you. Oh, thank you. So thank you. <laughs> and thank you guys for joining us. Join us next week on Homestyle Southern Cooking. <laughs>